today is all about super and estate planning. It's really important to know that your superannuation does not necessarily form part of your will. Yep, you heard me, super, your super fund is its own entity. This isn't just for self-managed super funds, this is for all super funds. Your superannuation will either be an accumulation phase, where you're putting money into it, or pension phase, where you're taking money out, like we've talked about in the last couple of modules. If you're in accumulation phase, you should have a nomination on your account that tells the trustee of the fund where you want your super to go to when you die. There's two main types of nominations, depending on what's available in your super fund. The first is a non-binding death nomination. This one's essentially a wish. The trustees are not bound to follow the instructions if someone else has a claim to your super but in the absence of that, will abide by your wishes. Then there's a binding lapsing nomination. These are binding on the trustee, but the instructions lapse after a set period of time, usually three years. After that, they'll either revert back to that non-binding death nomination, or they'll actually just expire and there'll be nothing in place. Then there's a binding non-lapsing. These are probably the best ones to have in place. The trustee is bound to follow your instructions and those instructions don't lapse. For any binding nomination, you will have had your form witnessed by two people who aren't the person that you're leaving your money to. So if you haven't signed a form and had two witnesses um, witness your signature on that, then you know that you don't have a binding nomination in place. Now, if you're in pension phase, there's one other one that may have happened. So you may have set up a reversionary pension when you started your pension. This means that if you die, your pension reverts or goes to the person that you nominated, and then they'll draw that pension essentially on your behalf. If you don't have one of those, then you should have one of the nominations in place like an accumulation account. So either a binding lapsing or a binding non-lapsing nomination. So regardless of if you're in a self-managed super or your super is on a platform, your next job is to check, do I have a binding nomination in place? Because what happens if you don't have one? Well, then it's up to the trustee of your super fund where your money goes. And this includes any life insurance that you might have held through super that gets paid to your super fund. It includes people that you might not have wanted your super to go to the husband that you're no longer with but haven't finalised your finances or gotten that divorce, the child that you weren't going to leave any money to, or the de facto relationship that really wasn't all that serious. So they're really important to have in place. The other important thing to know with these nominations is that you can't just leave your super to anyone you want to. You can only leave your super to a financial dependent. That is your spouse, de facto, or your children. No, you cannot leave your super to your sister, or the RSPCA, or your mum. You might have filled the form out to say that, but when it actually comes to actioning it, your form is going to get rejected. I know what some of you are thinking. I don't have any of those people, and I really want to leave my money to the RSPCA. That's okay. In that case, you should still have a nomination in place, that leaves your super to your personal legal representative. This essentially means that your super fund's going to be sold down and the money sent to your estate. Then once it's an estate asset, it can be dispersed according to your will and then it can go to wherever you want. But even if you want it to go to your estate so that it can get dispersed in accordance with your will, you should still tell the super fund trustees that that's what you want to have happen by filling out one of those forms. So like I say, the most important part of your homework today is to make sure that you have a death nomination in place, regardless of whether your super is in an industry fund, a platform, or is self-managed. Now, while we're on the topic of super and estate planning, let's talk a little bit about Australia's version of a death tax. You might notice that on your super statements, there's a taxable component and a non-taxable component. The taxable or taxed component is any money that you put into super and you got a tax deduction for. 
and the earnings on that money. That means anything your employer has paid and any concessional contributions that you made to your super fund. If your super then goes to an adult child when you die, they're going to pay tax at 17% on that component, which is 15% tax plus the Medicare levy. So if you have a super fund worth $500,000 and you've only ever put money in through your wages, salary sacrificing or extra contributions that you've claimed tax deductions for, then it's going to be that 100% taxable fund. And that means that if it goes to an adult child, then they're going to lose $85,000 in tax. Which is really interesting actually, because if you had met a condition of release yourself, and you'd personally taken that money out of the account, it would have been tax free. So here's a tip, a financial planner might be able to help you reduce the tax burden to your children using different strategies. You should talk to them about if that's possible in your own situation. Here's another tip. If you know that you're unwell and you have a potentially terminal illness and you're intending to have your super go to adult children, please talk to a financial planner or a financial advisor about whether your super fund should be withdrawn. As you can see, estate planning and financial planning go together. And it really is an area that is going to be different for everyone. The idea of this series is not to give you personal advice, but rather help you create an action plan of things that you need to be aware of and add to the questions that you want answered.